It's absolutely phenomenal. It was it was Scott, right? That yeah, gave us Scott. He uh, a he has an amazing voice. It's like the most perfect narration voice, for, especially for a paranormal like investigation or for a haunted home. But he was telling us all about it, and he didn't tell us the name of the entity that resides there. And we ended up making direct contact with this entity by name. Mm-hmm. Like it's just absolutely wild how it all went down. But when uh, when we started investigating Revenant, the very first thing that happened to me is I saw what looked like a white figure standing in the room that's connected to the kitchen. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, whatever. It was just my eyes playing tricks on me, just like looking into the dark room real quick. I just, I, I thought I saw a white figure in there, but I, I just brushed it off, you know, because it was like one of those real quick things. I didn't think much of it at first. And then we started, we started investigating. We went to that super creepy witch's room. We went to the witch's room at first. Mm-hmm. And do we get one of the first things we get is like a light anomaly right there at that point. And we start getting some direct responses in that room. I don't have much time stamped on this one yet. But at the very beginning, at 28 minutes in, we get another EVP that goes, Mother Effer, Mm -hmm. loud and clear, dude. It's so loud and clear on the Sony Saint. So immediately we knew there was something there that uh, had energy, had power, had the ability to communicate, and was uh, aggressive to say the least. Yeah, and uh, the entity there has been known to possess people, they say. Yeah, there's two documented cases. One is recorded on audio, and it's never, ever been released to anybody. And the second one was actually recorded on video. And when they were recording the second one, they were in the dark. They were in night vision, and one of the people in the room started talking real creepy and real weird. And come to find out, the person was being possessed, and he starts obviously showing signs. Like a few minutes in, it's like contorted oh my God, arm and his, it, his eyes. You can see it in his eyes and his movements. The way he's moving around is so weird. And uh, he starts saying the exact same things that the first person said when they were possessed. And that first, the the audio from that first possession has never been released. There's no way this guy would have ever known that this has happened before. And both of them were saying the same things. They claim to be the same entity. And the entity, we'll go ahead and say it, the entity says his name is Seven. Mm -hmm. He goes, goes by the name Seven. Goes by the number Seven. And both people... Both people who got possessed, both of them ended up collapsing after a little while. Like the first person was possessed for much longer, and but they ended up just falling face down on the floor and passing out. And the second person was they were only possessed for like what, like fifteen minutes, not even that. And yeah. they ended up doing the same thing. They passed out face first on the ground. And it's a uh, again, we didn't we we didn't know that the name of the entity was Seven. Later in the night, we heard, we either heard Seven on the spirit box or we were like, maybe we should ask Seven, who is also the name of a different entity on the other side, supposedly, that's an operator. Seven is the name of a spirit that can help you connect to other spirits, supposedly, from what Alex was told by a friend of his. And so we were like, just out of the blue, we were like, maybe it would be a good idea to ask that spirit guide, Seven, if he would talk to us. And And it was weird because... At that location, we hadn't really brought it up at any other location, really. Yeah, that but was that, that one. Was we just started. Working. It was very strange. So yeah, we were thinking that we were contacting the spirit guide named Seven, who helps connect you with other spirits. Reaching so the entity here is Seven, and like so, we didn't want to tell the people on the live stream that we didn't want to freak everyone out, you know, thinking that we're talking with this demon who's been known to possess people, and there's documentation of the possessions occurring. So like. I, I wrote a little note on the phone telling Alex, I was like, look, dude, that, that entity that possesses people here, its name is Seven. Yeah. And it it uh, it just, it took a very, it, it took a very drastic turn after that. And then 
So right after we realized this, I saw a light anomaly in the room behind Alex. I saw a light anomaly in there, and I was like, whoa, dude, I just saw something in there. Alex walks right to the spot where the light anomaly was. He walks right there. Now, that, that freaked me out. I was just like, whoa. And we're having, like, communication back and forth, which now at this point we believe is the Demon 7, not the spirit guide that we were thinking of. And we, I go to the corner of the room because we had some gear over there, or I set some gear down, and I walked back, and when I turned to look at Alex, I saw this seven-foot hooded figure in the corner, like, facing Alex and me, like, kind of, like, almost, like, side-facing us, and it's, it's, it was wearing a big black robe with a black hood up, and the robe was, like, textured, it was, like, cloth, you could see, you could see the texture of it, and the, the inside of the hood, the inside of the hood was blacker than black, it was, like, it was, like, almost, like, velvet, I don't know, it was just, it was the most, it was the most deep darkness I'd ever seen on anything. And I was staring at this figure, like this hooded seven foot figure. And I just started cussing. I just started like yelling and cussing. I was like, I think the first thing I said was, Oh, shh. Like, I, just said the <laughs> S word. I said the S word over and over and over and over. Like, and that, that's how I react to, the, to seeing the things there. Like, yeah, dude, like you, I, you, you, uh, you were like, all of a sudden, just like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> like, I, mean, I could tell it, it was. It was the freakiest thing I've ever seen, man. I, and, and here's the thing: like, I didn't see like any kind of light play or shadow play or any kind of. I saw the figure, the seven foot huge hooded figure with the hood up and just like the blackest black inside of the hood, like and it was. It was clear, like it was. Dude, it was so so terrifying and I could tell like in the moment and then I kept expecting to see it like everywhere we went after that the the other thing I saw so so what led up to that is us remembering like because we had we had heard about the entity named seven before at this farmhouse we had heard about it before from numerous people like we know Matt Benton and he had talked about his dealings with seven mm-hmm. and I had known people who investigated there, and they told me about the Demon Seven, but I, I hadn't like I hadn't thought about it in months, maybe even a year. Like you know, I hadn't even the, the only time Seven had ever come up within the past year was when Alex was telling me about the Spirit Guide Seven that can help you connect with other spirits, and so that's the only that's the only uh, connection that I had associated with the name Seven. But so once I once I remembered and told Alex that. And then saw that light anomaly. Then we go in there, and then we see the hooded figure. Like when I saw the hooded figure, it was just such a drastic turn of events. I yeah. think I think seeing that light anomaly was on purpose. I think the hooded figure did something to make that light anomaly show in there, so we would go in there, so I would see it. Yeah, I mean, it all made that that makes sense, honestly, for how everything played out. And you walked, you walked right towards where it was and then you stop right where the light anomaly happened which was just mind blowing and then the other thing so there was one other visual thing I saw there the other visual thing I saw was we were in that room earlier in the night in the upstairs there's only one room upstairs and we were up in that room and I was looking out towards the steps and I saw what looked like five streaks of it four different spirit manifestations of energy and, and it all led up to that hooded figure it all led up to see because every every light Every uh, manifestation I saw was white until that hooded figure. Yeah. That was the only thing that wasn't white. Yeah, what a night. Oh, and dude, what about the 587 saying gateway? Oh, my so God. Loud and clear and weird. Like, that was awesome. Also, oh, I got we got I got to tell this, man, and then we can move on to the next one, but I've got to tell this. The first time I was there at Revenant Acres, I had a gateway device going in that front room that front room on the side and at one point like we're, we're making direct contact this woman spirit she goes I, it had never happened before it's never happened since and she said stop and it stops and this is all captured on live stream too that's all live stream footage this time we were there i had the gateway going downstairs by myself or no i think you would 
you had just joined back up with me. Yeah. Or no, no, no. It was right before you joined back up with me. The gateway's going, and then all of a sudden, everything on the gateway shuts off. Everything shuts off. Boom. Gateway stops. And I'm like, what the hell? What the hell just happened? I'm looking through all the cables. I'm looking through everything. I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. So what I decided to do is I take the power switch to it. I, tur- I hit the power switch to the off position, and then I clicked it back on. Everything turns on like normal, and it works. The spirits there have the ability to stop equipment from working, and they don't have to click the power switch. They don't have to drain the battery. They can just make your equipment stop working. And this is proof. It's happened twice now, and the second time it happened in an – like, I can't even figure out how they would have done it. They didn't hit the power switch. They didn't unplug anything. They literally just made everything turn off. And then I flipped the switch to the off position and then flipped it back on and it, everything turned back on like normal. Yeah, and I've, I've never seen that happen anywhere else in any of your, your work. Yeah, dude, the only, the only other time anything close like that's happened is when I was there the last time and the spirit made the, mm-hmm. it made the drain the battery from the amplifier. Yeah, and then so... It, so once we got to the end of that location, it was like, what, 6.30 in the morning when we left? Yeah, yep. And we drove straight to Post Town Elementary School. After investigating Revenant Acres all night, we drive over two hours, or right at about two hours, to Post Town Elementary School. And by all night, we mean we got to Revenant around like 5, I think? It was right at, it was right at 6. We got there okay. right at 6. We stopped at Wendy's before. So we did a six to six in the morning. Yep. Nonstop. <laughs> yep, nonstop. Drove to Post Town. And then when we got to Post Town, we decided to do a walk through in the morning. Yeah, which was so we were we literally were going to use the bathroom before going to bed and Alex was like, Should I bring my camera with me? Just in case anything happens? And, me, and, like, I'm so sleep-deprived at this point, and I, we just got done driving, and I was like, no, dude, no, don't bring the camera. <laughs> like, and, he was, and you were like, I'm going to bring it anyways, just in case. And I'm glad he did, because after we both peed, we, we came out of the bathrooms, and we were like, you know, let's look around a little bit. Maybe, you know, because it, it was literally, like, 9.30 in the morning at this point, like 9 or 9.30 in the morning. And so school would have been in session. It was a Wednesday School would have been in session at this time back when it was in operation. And so our goal was to capture residual uh, – we were trying to capture any kind of residual energy, whether it be through EVP or visually or just – we're just trying to catch any evidence of any residual school-type energy. And so we started walking around with that frame in mind. Like He's filming. All we have is the EVP recorder and the camera. And we get up, once we get upstairs, that's when it starts getting crazy. Yep, we 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 got upstairs. We instantly hear some kind of like equipment. Someone said it sounded kind of like a school bell partially ringing. Yeah, or like a REM pod or something. Yep. And so that leads us into the doll room where we hear some sounds that we couldn't figure out if it was from you or not because it looked like when you stepped in that one spot it made it, but then when you started jumping on it, it it, it didn't make any more sounds. So it was hard to tell about that one. Then we walk all the way down to the other end of the hallway uh, toward the room they call the mean teacher's room. And that's when we decided to do the EVP session. And we just turned the recorder on. And we're just, we, we said we were just going to be silent to see if we could pick up any residual. Exactly. And then about, I mean, what, maybe 10 seconds in... Just it sounds after replaying it, it sounds like uh like a locker or something slamming. Man, no, but here in real time, so yeah, we were going for about ten seconds. We were literally just gonna record and then play back and listen to see if we picked up any residual sounds from the school. And ten seconds in, we hear this thunderous just boom. Yeah, and I mean it man, was loud. You know, in, in real time, dude, it sounded like a big door just slamming like against it and then popping back open like it did to me it sounded way bigger than a locker there's no way it was just a locker like 
Or if it was a locker, it was someone taking like a fifty pound weight and launching it at the locker. <laughs> like Yeah, because in real time it, it was so much louder than it sounds on the video. Yeah, like also it was in a curve.